They say that a minister and his Bible must not be separated. That's a joke. I want to, I've been requested to say a prayer of invocation. But first of all, please permit me to give honor to our sovereign Lord and also to our esteemed guests, including our very busy minister, Dr. Gatsby Dolly, and our beloved mayor, Mr. Honorable Regravo. May I say this, a community is made up of a diverse group of people, notwithstanding societal status or religious differences. We are a people with needs, and this is our commonality. One thing we know that we are a people with needs and God is able to meet every need. The location of our of our building is very interesting. It brings to mind Psalms 121, which I would like to quote two verses. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And when we look up at the hills, we are going to see this building. It's very interesting. So we want to pray at this time, and we are going to honor God. So could I ask you to bow your heads with us in prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we give honor to you. You are our sovereign Lord, and we are so thankful, O oh God, that you have brought us to see this day, this very hour. We want to thank you for this. Lord, we want to thank you for the, those who were responsible for this building, the plans, the workers, those who worked hard preparing this building, making it what it is at this time. We want to thank you for every one of them. Some may have gone on, others are probably not here. But Lord, we want to thank you for every one of them. Whatever small part that they may have had in preparing this building, we want to thank you for it. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for protection for this building. We live in a society where people, certain people, are destroying buildings. But we ask you, God, for the divine protection upon this building. We ask, Heavenly Father, that predators would not find their way into this building to disrupt it in any way. 
So we are committing this building into your divine hands. And we are asking you to give it divine protection, Lord, throughout the day and even throughout the night, Lord. Father, we are asking protection for those who will be working in this building. We are asking you, Heavenly Father, that you will be with them. Give them wisdom, direction, and guidance, Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, we are committing this entire building and the procedure into your divine hands. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you add your blessing to it now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we dedicate this building to you, to your honor, to your glory, and to the people of North San Fernando. In Jesus' name we pray. And let everybody say amen. 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 Thank you so very much. As I invite to do the national anthem on pan, uh, Tarif McGilvery and Adifo Young. Let's put our hands together for them, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You may be seated. This afternoon, I would want to apologize for the absence of the Honorable uh, Faris Alwari, Attorney General and Minister, Member of Parliament for San Fernando West. I would also like to apologize, or oh, the Director is here. Thank you very much. Okay, so it gives me great privilege to offer a warm welcome on behalf of the Director of Community Development, who has now stepped in, Ms. Susan Corbett, to offer a warm, warm welcome, and of course it's warm, to each and every one for taking time out from your busy schedule to join with us this afternoon in the official opening of this beautiful edifice, the San Fernando North Community Center. I think you could put your hands together for yourselves. Yeah. Happy, happy, happy that you are here to make this afternoon a success. As we continue with this afternoon's program, at this time we want to move right along and I want to invite to the podium uh, Ms. Gloria Copeland, and she is a, very much a live wire in this part of the vineyard. Actually, she is the president of the Springvale Women's Group, and she is coming to present the community slash the secretary's report. Let's put our hands together and warmly welcome her. Good afternoon, everyone. To our mayor of the city of San Fernando, His Worship, Olaman Junior Regrello, Minister of Community Development, Culture and Arts, Do Dr. the Honorable Ian Gasby Dolly, other parliamentary and local government representatives, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, Ms. Angela Edwards. Director of Community Development Division, Ms. Suzanne Corbett. Supervisor and Staff, Community Development Division, Victoria. Staff from other community development districts, members of the San Fernando Community and Environs. Special awardees, distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure that I present the Secretary's report on behalf of the Springvale Paradise community. The report is a brief historical perspective of the Springvale community that I probably represent here today. Springvale is an integral part of the city of San Fernando. Therefore, the historical background is the same as San Fernando. In this community, we have quite a number of groups, CBOs, which includes Springvale United Women's Group, the Waterfront Relief Center, the Springvale Community Council, the Fisherman's Association, Boat Owners Association, 
the Scouts and the Girl Guides Association. The Springvale United Women's Group is a group of women from Springvale area who came together on January 17, 1987. Our main purpose was keeping the community together. As our motto says, bringing the community together. To do this, we focused on projects and enhanced the mental, physical, and spiritual aspects of the lives of members of our community and its environs. We initiated programs in a community to strengthen the family and promote good family life skills through educational and wellness programs and safety in the home and community. The Waterfront Relief Center actually started in 1991 under the leadership of Reverend Norma Hart and assistants. Brother Roland Chandler, Brother Ashmeed Mohammed, and Sister Rose McKenzie. Sister Janet Gill, McGill, and Sister Audrey Carter. This ministry also started a free school which was registered with the Ministry of Education under the leadership of Mrs. Norma Hart and Yolanda Edwards. This bore much fruit as the kids were exposed to singing competitions and went on to be very successful in public primary schools of their choice. We are happy to state the Waterfront Relief Center continues to function as a caring ministry under the leadership of Sister Rose McKenzie. The Revival Time Assembly through Pastor Lloyd Hart continues to be a full operation and well to be full in full operation and well organized. This facility played a key role in hosting a number of functions, meetings, and classes of the Community Development Division. They also played a role in facilitating the Springvale Women's Group and the Springvale Community Council. We want to thank them for accommodating us throughout these years as there was no community center available. So we thank you to the hearts, especially the facility manager, Mr. Richard Hart. <laughs> The Springvale Community Council is of two years in existence. The council has a passion for the upliftment of the younger generation and the welfare of all peoples in the community. They also have a slow, uh, motto, almost like the women's group, because they want to keep the community of Springvale together. So we thank them for rearing their heads in Springvale and we know that they are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. Thank you to the Springvale Community Council. This outstanding community center was built in an area that was once a cemetery of the first peoples of Trinidad and Tobago. Before any construction could have been, could have been, could have been taken, a ritual by the descendants of the clan had to be done on the spot Again, Springvale is blessed with one of those descendants, Mr. Anthony Ali, who was instrumental in making a connection with Mr. Barra, the, first le uh, the leader of the First Peoples, and his team to do this ritual. We also want to say a special thanks to our mayor, Alderman Junior Regrelli, who started this project while he was a member of parliament for San Fernando West. He initiated this project and again, as the mayor of San Fernando, in conjunction with the present member of parliament, Mr. Faris Alwali, they, overse they, overseed, they oversaw that this project was completed. So we want to thank our mayor. For being, the, for being the person behind this project. It is also an area where we produce quite a lot of dignitaries. In our area, San Fernando is blessed with four mayors coming from our community. They are Mr. Gerard Montano, Mr. Edmund Jones, Mr. William D. Steele, and our present mayor, 
Mr. Junior Riguelo. They are all, all members who came from this community. We also produced the late former President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. George Maxwell Richards. So aren't we very rich? Yeah. It is reported that the numerous CBOs in our community have made and continue to make sterling contributions towards the advancements of the community and its environs. In conclusion, we would like to thank God Almighty and the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and Arts for this red letter day as we officially open this beautiful edifice. The community-based organization feels a sense of pride and fulfillment today. And we, along with members of our community, will make every effort towards the upkeep and effective use of this outstanding facility. I thank you very much. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you very much, Ms. Copeland, for that comprehensive report. Let's put our hands together for her again. Thank you very much. And of course, we want to apologize for that bit of power outage. Nevertheless, the show will go on. We are here to get the job done. Is that all right? Okay. As we continue this afternoon, we move right along with a cultural item. And it's my happy privilege to welcome this afternoon, Ms. Nikisha. Gabriel. Let's welcome her, please. Thank you. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth day.
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Gabriel. Let's put our hands together for our game. And indeed, that's a very powerful song in the intent that the word hallelujah, it's a universal language, and it means the highest praise. Amen? Okay. So we continue this afternoon, and it's my privilege again to welcome to bring a word of greetings to us this afternoon, His Worship, Mr. Junior Rigello, the Mayor of the City of San Fernando. Let's put our hands together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Master of Ceremonies. that we 
important must be is ensuring all those who are allowed to citizen be take the responsibility for it and treat it as your own. The long term sustainability of this building, as well as many of the other upcoming projects in San Fernando, hinge upon our citizens accepting responsibility for the general upkeep of these buildings. In so doing, we have initiated the necessary steps towards true cultural and social changes that are needed if we expect to elevate and progress as a city and as a nation. On behalf of the members of the Council, the San Fernando City Corporation, and the citizens of San Fernando, I personally would like to express our heartfelt thanks and gratitude to the Honorable Minister of Community Development and Culture and Arts, Dr. Nayan Nazidoli, and the Member of Parliament of San Fernando West, Honorable Paris Ferrari, for completing this project. We look forward to using this facility towards greater, creating a better and stronger community, and to working together with all stakeholders to ensure we achieve the positive changes, the social and cultural evolution that our citizens can achieve, and continue the policy towards making a better tomorrow today. Thank you. 
Nation League in a place of honor. The operations of this center will be founded on brief values, a sense of compassion, care, and empathy. This afternoon, I salute you for your motto, simple but effective, bringing the community together. When we work together, we are greater than the sum of our parts. When we work together, we bring unlimited creativity, passion, and expertise to the table. When we work together, we can achieve incredible things. I know that the staff of our community development division, many of whom are present here, value working together with all communities, and certainly the community of San Fernando. The real wealth of a high functioning community and a nation lies as we know in its people. As we open this beautiful building, it is a privilege to salute those who have brought us to this moment. We say special thanks to our project managers, Unicot, the contractor, A.G. Mahavir, Maintenance Company Limited, and the members of the ministry's project unit and community development team. Given our country's financial situation and understanding the need of this and many communities, being able to deliver this community center is truly a blessing. And community members of San Fernando North, I hope you do feel blessed. After 11 years now, after 11 years, being able to realize this dream really is something we should all be proud of. So therefore, we look forward then to the end 
entrance from San Fernando North in the Prime Minister's dress with shoot from Patricia Portway. privilege to welcome to do a dance for us at the front, uh, Miss Kelsey Richards. Let's put our hands together and welcome Miss Kelsey Richards.
in Trinidad and Tobago and in particular San Fernando Lord. Let's put our hands together for the please. At this time we want to go into some presentation of special awards and uh, I will now invite uh, Mr. Reverend Lloyd Hart, the kindly gracious with his presence on the, on the podium. And I, and I invite the supervisor one, Ms. Ramuta, to read a profile biography on his behalf. And in addition to that, I'll ask the minister to be on standby to kindly present this award. Thank you very much. Reverend Lloyd E. Hart. He was a former senior employee at the National Housing Authority, now the Housing Development Corporation. And he honed his interpersonal skills by liaising with housing applicants. He left his job at the NHE to accept a full-time position at the Revival Time Assembly. He was already actively involved with the church since its early days on Shacken Street. His ministry spans over 53 years of service, not only to the church, but to the community. He is well known in the Springfield community, as many of the older residents would have attended the Revival Time Assembly at some point in time. He is a patron of the Waterfront Relief Center, and his church has been instrumental in establishing a network of churches at Hermitage Village Thompson Gardens, and Pleasantville. All of these churches are still in operation. He is married to Reverend Norma E. Hart for over 63 years. And together, <laughs> and together they have influenced and changed many lives, thereby expanding the kingdom of God. He truly exemplifies the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ, which states, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. From Trinidad to the Caribbean and other parts of the world, through radio broadcasts, award-winning plays, gospel records, Reverend Hart did exactly that. He continues to reach the heart of many, preaching and teaching the world to all. Reverend Lloyd E. Hart. Bertrand Smith. <laughs> Mr. Bertrand Smith was born and raised on Vistabella Road, Springvale, San Fernando. Mr. S Smith, along with three others, Henry Ramdeen, Chiney Jackman, and Wayne Jackie, were the founding members of the Henry, Henry Ramdeen and Associates Band during the years 1986 to 2009. In 2010, the name of the band was changed to Indian Nation. The band has been competing in the mini band category in both North, North and South Carnival for the past 30, 33 years, in which they have won various titles. Mr. Bertrand Smith is one of the last original members of his band, his role includes band leader, mass builder, designer, financier, and all-round organizer. The band has always been known for playing authentic Indian mass 
as Mr. Smith always explains his reason for keeping to this type of mass because he believes genuinely in it. He is also be believed to be the only individual within the community who can make the traditional moccasin boots, which is a dying art that not many can do in this modern world. He has also passed his love for his traditional Indian mask to his daughter, who works hand in hand with him. Mr. Bertrand. Copeland. <laughs> Mrs. Gloria Copeland, formerly of Separia, came to reside in the Springville area and has been working with community groups to enha enhance the life of all the residents with her passion and commitment to family life and culture. Founder, forming member of Springville Village Council, and currently the president of the Springvale Women's Group. She is also a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Federation of Women's Institute and currently the president of the Victoria District and the past president of the national body. She is a member of the Nursing Council of Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago Association of Midwives, formerly a vice president, former secretary of the Education Committee of the Public Services Credit, Credit Union, a choir member of St. Andrew Cagua Roman Catholic Church, which is located in Vistabella, a former drama and parent group member. She would have participated in the Prime Minister's Best Village competition. Her desire is to see the youths involved in the upliftment of the community. Gloria Copeland. <laughs> I'd like to invite the mayor to present this award. Good afternoon, everyone. Your worship. <clears throat> afternoon, everyone. Your worship, Mr. Junior Riguello. On behalf of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, and the residents of San Fernando North, we 
present you with this token of appreciation. And I'm also, because I remember it is in your tenure as MP of this area, this facility was put in. We thank you very much for watching over it, keeping abreast with it. And if you didn't start it, nobody can finish it. Thank you, sir. So as you move along with the presentations, we want to invite the Honorable Minister to receive this token. And also we want to invite the President of the Springville Village Council to do this presentation, Mr. Craig Ahim. my delight to welcome at this time to do an expression of thanks. Kindly welcome Mr. Trevor Alexander, and he is the Public Relations Officer of the Springville Community Council. Let's put our hands together and welcome Mr. Alexander. Hi, good evening. I, on the behalf of the Springville Community Council, the residents of Springville and the wider community of San Fernando North, 
would like to thank all for attending this auspicious occasion, one that has been long in the making, eminent in its necessity, sometimes lacking in priority, but upon recommencement, quick in its execution. It gives me great pleasure to sincerely thank the following persons for their heartfelt contributions towards the success of today's program. The Mayor of the City of San Fernando, His Worship, Junior Rivero. Minister of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, Dr. The Honorable Man Gabby Dolly. Yes. Other parliamentary and local government representatives, permanent secretary of the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, Ms. Angela Edwards, Director of Community Development Divisions, Ms. Suzanne Corbett, Corbett, sorry, <laughs> Supervisors and Staff of the Community Development Divisions of Victoria, Staff from other Community Development Districts, Tariq McGilvery and Adifa Younglo for the rendition of the National Anthem, Reverend Lloyd Hart for the invocation. Ms. Gloria Copeland, President of Springfield Women Group. And Ms. Nakisha Gabriel and Ms. Kelsey Richards for the entertaining cultural expression. Also the special awards. Distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for your contributions and attendance. Good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Alexander. And in this time, we have reached a very important part of today's proceedings, and that is the cutting of the ribbon and the unveiling of the commemorative flag. So at this time, I would uh, like to invite the head table to kindly proceed today to the cutting of the ribbon and the unveiling of the commemorative flag. And we are kindly asking uh, the audience to kindly be seated uh, while we promise to have a musical Especially the first people, burial sites are repaired sites. And so we are glad that in San Fernando we would have been able to do the right type of ceremony, which would have um, had the blessings of the first people. And so we feel that um, we are honored to be on this site. We feel it's a good addition to the foundation. And it means that the whole center is steeped in the good values of our ancestors. And we look forward to that continuing. So, so, what are the spooky light show? Which is this morning, well, Yeah, that happened. <laughs> well, you know what, certainly, if we look for um, explanations from the spiritual side of it, I'm sure we could find lots of them to explain things that could be easily explained scientifically as well. So, I don't, I don't see that as being any um, foreboding of evil or doom. <laughs> 
So um, there are some things that would be done right after a centre is um, taken possession of and certainly once a centre is open it means the community can now come in and they can start to use it and if there's any issues there is a time period that Unicorn 2 or the project managers will be on site and will ensure that everything is up to scratch and working properly. It's important to open a centre when they are still there so it's operational, it can be used and anything that needs to be addressed can be addressed in a short period of time. This is a normal thing. Well, um, uh, that is one of the considerations and it's something that we have to discuss. I have to look at what applications have been made and, and other centers we do have elevators, some of them have ramps and so on. So I would have to, I'm now going to do my walkthrough and I'm sure um, that would have been taken into consideration and we'll see what applications have been made. Um, <laughs> Certainly. Is, is this the contractor? Yes. Yes, yeah. You also have an audiovisual room, a computer room, an administrative room. You have a kitchen that can house culinary arts, teaching, and all of that. Um, you have a multi purpose room at the basement. You have parking. Uh, we've catered for almost every aspect of the community. What's the capacity here? The seating capacity of the auditorium is 275 persons. And uh, of course, there are other rooms that will be used outside of the auditorium. Uh, classrooms, computer rooms, and that sort of thing. Could, could house at least 50, 60 children per day. Really? Give us your name. Terence B. Pat. Terence B. Pat? From Unicorn, yes. Unicorn. So there's an elevator? Yes, there is an elevator. Yeah. Uh, well, because there's a TNT load problem today, uh, the elevator would not be functional, but Unicorn is going to be here for one year after the center is open to improve on all of those aspects. Uh, uh, it's called a defects liability period. Um, so that will be functional before we, we, we leave. We don't, we're not leaving today. So we have us for one year. So with regards to the, um, the, the, the lighting issue earlier, um, the lighting, what has happened, that yes. was a there, there's a, there was a TNT problem, uh, uh, there's a load issue. Uh, when we tried to uh, activate the air condition upstairs, mm -hmm. the, 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 the breaker tripped. Um, right? But the, the remainder of the facility is as well for the air condition. Say again? Uh, no, it's just electrical issue. Electrical? Yes. Okay. Is, um, one other question before I go. Um, since Gatsby Dolly mentioned that um, there are some things that could be completed, you know, even though we've had the opening today, um, could you give us an idea what are some of the you know, things that need to be completed at the centre? Well, um, basically the, the, the facility is, is ready for operation, mm -hmm. but I, I think the, the, uh, because of the size of it, there needs to be a management. Somebody needs to be hired to manage the facility, um, which I think the, the ministry put to the table. They would coordinate the events, but they, they would require some coordination of the different activities that are taking place. So I think uh, as soon as the manager is, is um, put in, they would then start taking events and, and that sort of thing. Can you just tell us um, what is the square footage of the compound? Uh, the square footage of this compound it is actually one acre of, uh, of, of, of uh, one acre. And it stretches across St. Vincent and the Shackon Street. Two entrances, and you can see a pedestrian entrance on Shackon Street, and then of course the vehicular entrance on St. Vincent Street. Thank you so much. Thank you.